Greetings and welcome. This is Rajiv Makni on the Cell Guru Show, and today once again, lots of great stuff on the show, like the Realme GT Neo 3T, new variant again in the GT series. Good performance, nice responsive 120 hertz display, AMOLED screen, 80 watt fast charging. So the design also nice looking phone, good battery life, but the cameras didn't impress us as much as I thought they should, and the build slightly plasticky. Plus, of course, no 3.5 mm headphone jack. So all all in all, some good, some not so good. Then we'll move on to our very, very famous and always awaited Qualcomm segment. Today, I'm going to actually introduce you to a very interesting voice app developed by a person who is visually impaired. And then we'll move on to the Moto Edge 30 Fusion new phone from Motorola. Premium design, nice lightweight, thin phone. When Motorola goes thin, they really go thin. This is the thinnest smartphone in India. No 3.5 women headphone jack. I don't know where they would have actually fitted it in such a thin phone. Nice processor, fast. But the phone started to heat up quite a bit while we were playing games. So may not be the best part with the camera. Nice front camera, I think, at least for the piece that we have, gave us a lot of a pink tint. So is this an all-rounder from Motorola that's going to be a bestseller? We'll find out in our review. Let's get started with today's Cell Guru Show. So our top story, our big review today is the Realme GT Neo 3T. Yes, again, another GT series from Realme. Nice big screen, 6.62 inches and AMOLED, Snapdragon 870 processor, 5000 mAh battery and an 80 watt super dark charger. Priced quite aggressively under 30,000 rupees. Well, one rupee short, 30,000 rupees say ek rupee kam, yani ke 29,999. Here then is our review. The mid-range smartphone segment has evolved to a point where advancements are more evolutionary than revolutionary. Nowhere it is more evident than in Realme's latest. The Realme GT Neo 3T takes over from last year's GT Neo 2 and keeps much of the same internal and makes a few appropriate tweaks to liven up the formula. Will that be enough to keep the phone relevant in 2022? Let's find out. Realme's designers have been known to take inspiration from the elements, food and whatever they surround themselves with. Clearly, they have been playing a lot of chess if the checkerboard pattern at the back of the phone is anything to go by. The Realme GT Neo 3T keeps the weight light, its use of a plastic back and a similar polycarbonate frame. The materials used are fairly premium to touch and you can see that the company has paid attention to detail. Meanwhile, up front is a Gorilla Glass 5 panel for shatter and scratch protection. The GT Neo 3T keeps the same display from last year as well, but that's not a bad thing. The 6.62 inch 120Hz AMOLED HDR10 Plus capable panel goes plenty bright with over 1300 nits of brightness. Moreover, the color saturation is excellent. You can even tweak the color profiles to suit personal taste but we enjoyed the punchy colors out of the box. The multimedia package of the phone is wrapped up with stereo speakers that are reasonably balanced, though the audio quality leaves a bit to be desired. Additionally, the phone continues with the same under-display fingerprint sensor as well. It's quick to unlock and we faced no false detections. But that's it for the hardware package. The Realme hasn't made any changes in terms of IP ratings for water resistance. Coming to the performance, no changes here either. The Snapdragon 870 continues to be a champion performer with its excellent thermals and even better peak performance. All the latest games run just as you would expect and it is easy to max out frame rates in Genshin Impact, Call of Duty Mobile or any other title. The phone's interface is also suitably optimized and we came to enjoy the Realme UI on the phone. So what has changed? Charging speeds for one. The Realme GT Neo 3 can now top up its 5000 mAh cell at up to 80 watt speed. It's not a huge upgrade over the 65 watt speeds of the predecessor, but it does guarantee that your phone will go from 0 to 100 in under half an hour. On the other hand, there are no changes to the camera here either. The primary 64 megapixel sensor has been further optimized by Realme and now delivers even better deals and more accurate colors. Overall improvements to HDR performance also shines true and there's better dynamic range when shooting under dramatically different conditions. 
The only folly here is the overzealous sharpening that can make edges and buildings look just a bit artificial. There's also an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera that can capture possible shots with sufficient light and rather poor ones without. It's not going to set the mid range smartphone camera market on fire, but for what it is, the phone does the job. Low light shots are particularly challenging for the ultra wide camera where noise levels shoot up. Finally, coming to the selfies, the 16 megapixel camera struggles with managing sharpness levels and there's ample noise even in brightly lit situations. Priced at Rs 29,999, the Realme GT Neo 3T is an interesting move by the company in the game of smartphone chess. It's managed to make compromises in all the right places and deliver a package that does well on most fronts instead of focusing on a single feature. And that works just fine if you are in the market for an all-rounder and ans the Realme GT Neo 3T a recommendation from us. Now let's move on to our much awaited and very famous Qualcomm segment. Today I'm going to talk to you about a voice enabled app. It's a virtual friend to help you navigate your smartphone only app right now in the world which can do end to end voice control of all the popular apps. This app can help you reply to messages, book cabs, send emails. So this is a voice enabled app and a smartphone that is enabling specially abled people to actually get full functionality from their phones. And even more fascinating is the fact that who actually came up with this app? Here's our story. Smartphones are always critiqued for being a very addictive device, spending hours on the internet, browsing social media, playing games. We're always on our phones. But have you ever stopped to think, does it do more than just entertain us? Phones are now a part and parcel of our lives. We cannot think of our lives without a smartphone. Now look, smartphones improve our lives in more ways than one. And many qualities of the smartphone are actually worth celebrating. Everything can be done with the click of a button, from ordering food to booking cabs. They are simplifying our lives and with that improvement of technology, smartphones are doing so much more than we give them credit for. Now an area where we can see rapid development in technology is how smartphones are enabling specially abled people. Some apps are helping them navigate the day to day apart from apps that help you read, click photographs and even talk. Smartphones are making sure they do not face any hindrances. There's a new app in the market. It helps visually impaired individuals actually reply to WhatsApp messages and a whole lot more. The Louis voice control app developed by Pramit Bhargava is like a 24 seven assistant. It's a voice enabled app that helps you navigate WhatsApp, YouTube, Facebook Messenger, Uber contacts, Gmail, Play Store, Google search, text messages, call logs and phone calls also. Pramit and his team are working to bring more apps that can work with voice commands. Now Pramit lost his vision 20 years ago and spent a lot of time trying to navigate the basics of every day. And that is what prompted him to develop an app that can help him and many like him. We met Pramit to find out how it all started for him. With the advancement of technology, everyday mundane tasks are just a click and a tap away. We did not need to think twice before using our phones to reply to messages or do a quick internet search. Tasks such as ordering food and transferring money have been simplified thanks to digital technology. But have you ever thought that executing such simple tasks is not so simple for some people? For Gurgaon based Pramit Bhargav, using his phone for basic tasks such as calling someone or booking a cab hey, was a Herculean piece of work. Book Uber for Buddha Metro Station. Hey, yaad, ho na, sara, ho to bhai. Ha. hey Google. In 2012, Pramit lost his vision as a reaction to a medicine that he was taking. Having always done everything on his own, he did not know what hit him when he lost his sight suddenly and his confidence shattered completely. What really happened, uh, you know, when I really got uh, shock was really about 10 years back when uh, I realized that my vision had dropped so drastically that everything got wavy, foggy, I couldn't read a thing and my vision was dropping, dropping. And uh, what happens is uh, friends and family around us want to help us. but. 
the more they help you the more you become dependent on them and the more you get dependent on them the more the lesser is the confidence so i was in this vicious cycle and i realized that the only way to get out is to start doing things on my own and that's the only way to gain confidence and come back into the social mainstream there were all kind of challenges and i would say i was just becoming like a vegetable unless uh, until i got exposed to some technology and i started using more and more but you know the challenge like i said was how to use the smartphone because every time i had to otherwise just keep asking somebody to help me to pull himself out of the situation pramit started consulting other companies During one such consultancy meeting, a colleague, intrigued by how he navigates his day and what apps he uses, planted the seed of developing an app for people like him. He knew firsthand the problems that he was facing and he saw this as an opportunity to leverage his own disability to build something that could help thousands of others like him. So th that is when I said, okay, I am going into this startup and I am going to build something. Uh, of course, then the question is, what do you build? A chance meeting with a friend gave him the idea of what to build. His friend took him through the entire process of booking a cab, right from choosing the destination, the ride type, and then the payment. This made Pramit realize that he was in control of the entire thing. And now one funny thing with this experience is that as a disabled I don't want to be dependent on anybody. However, here I had complete control. I felt as if because I was the one making the decisions. I was the one who was directing my friend what to do. So when I was coming back in the uh, cab, a uh, thought just came. It was like a eureka moment. And I said, what if I can build a virtual friend right here on the smartphone, right here on the screen? which will take my voice commands and which will execute the action for me so which will for example uh, allow me to book a cab end to end online all of it with my voice commands it will understand that i cannot uh, see anything on the screen i cannot read the screen and this is really how the concept of louis uh, voice control uh, came in uh, so uh, so louis does exactly this so it's like a virtual friend you give it voice commands it will interact with you in fact it's the only app right now in the world which can do end to end uh, voice control of all the popular apps it is the only app which does continuous voice interaction because that is needed if i have to get the work done end to end speak after the ping sound touch with one finger to send it to a friend so this like the app is currently being used by users in 107 countries and is loved by all pramit says that they have leveraged existing technology to build the app Now, what we have been able to do is, uh, we initially built uh, what I would call a screen reading technology. Now, the screen reading technology allows us to read what is on top of the screen. We then uh, built it further to actually be able to read what's under the screen. There's a lot of information available. We were able to go deep inside the operating system, and then most critically, we were able to perform virtual gestures on the screen, complex virtual gestures. See, without the smartphone, I don't think it would have been possible. Itni sari capabilities hain that are there in the smartphones, and today I think smartphones are being designed in a way that there are all kind of I would say multimedia capabilities. Lot of the technology is already provided within the phone itself. So, for example, speech to text conversion, text to speech conversion, lot of it is already there. and we, uh, what where we are very good at is that how do you uh, you know because kai bar agar aap sochiye ek user ke point of view se technology to hai but user does not see the technology us technology ko kaise leverage karke how do you create the right user experience and make the app work for the user so that's really the trick to it book uber for huda metro station opening uber just a moment setting it up so how does the app work you just hey say louis. hey louis to start off and then it will instruct you step by step Let's select a ride. Reading rides from low to high fare. Louis will reconfirm every step before confirming the action as it knows that you cannot see the screen. Shuttle 95 rupees. Shared rides lowest cost. Discount price 0 rupees. Select. Yes. No. It's like a friend who just understands ki meri kya need hai uh, from the voice command that I have given and it just gets the work done. The app is available for download on the Google Play Store and can also be used by people with motor disabilities and senior citizens with muscular issues. Apps like Louis are helping specially able people navigate the day-to-day -day with ease and comfort. 
and more importantly it makes sure that they are not dependent on anyone. And now let's meet Pramit, the mind behind it all. Welcome to the show Pramit and congratulations. What an incredible app you've actually created. Thank you Rajiv, great to be here. Great having you here Pramit. Now tell me, where did the idea of developing such an app come from? Well Rajiv, I used to be actually a completely sighted person. I'm a computer engineer from IIT and then did my MBA from IIM. And then while I was working with Hindustan Lever, it was reaction of a drug. All of a sudden I realized my vision had really dropped. Over the years, it kept dropping to the point that I couldn't read anything, everything was wavy, foggy. I went through a phase, what I call a lost phase, where three years I just lost confidence completely. Came out of it and then it was just a chance meeting with a MD at a venture capital company who pushed me into this, who said, why are you not leveraging your disability and building something that might work for others as well. So I just thought as a visually impaired, this is a wonderful golden opportunity. Really do you get a, such a chance? So I just made up a mind. I said, this is a wonderful way to leverage my disability. I'm going to build something that's going to really work, not just for me, but for millions of friends across the world. And that's how uh, this whole dream to build uh, Louis Voice Control started. Wonderful. Absolutely fantastic. And how important, Pramit, is it to have a phone that supports the app without any glitches? See, the capability of the phone, which is really the backbone, is I think really, really important, especially when you talk of an experiential uh, app such as Louis Voice Control. So today's smartphones, not only do they tend to be obviously very quick in terms of computing power, but they also have lots of capabilities, which as a user one may not see. But uh, as an app developer, I can tell you there are so many capabilities that we can leverage on. And uh, not just uh, capabilities which are linked to voice, the ability to connect quickly on the server, the ability to quickly uh, uh, turn things around, uh, the ability to deal with the multimedia, images, videos and so on. I think all of that is very critical to not only giving user a smooth experience, but a complete experience. Like in this voice case, so if you see Louis voice control, it's not the technology with the user sees, it's just a voice interaction between the user and Louis. And uh, it is today's smartphones which can make it happen. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much, Pramit, for being with us and congratulations once again. Now, Snapdragon is calling all the Cell Guru fans to join their global community called Snapdragon Insiders. Now, this gives you access to the latest scoop on Snapdragon tech, a chance to connect with the experts behind the scenes, premium experiences, exclusive contests, and much, much more. Look, I am a Snapdragon Insider already, and you can become one too by simply following Snapdragon on Twitter or Instagram. I'm showing you the handles right in front of me. Also, give yourself a chance to win a Samsung smartphone by participating in the NDTV Snapdragon contest. All you have to do is go to ndtv.com slash unleash your dreams. Let's take a quick break right now on the Cell Guru Show. When we come back, lots more happening. All right, let's move on now to our next review. This is the latest phone from Motorola, under 50,000 rupees. Nice OLED screen, 6.55 inches, bright screen, 1100 nits of peak brightness. Now, the 50 megapixel primary lens worked out very, very well. Uh, good photography all around in this particular phone. So it's priced at 42,999. Now, how much did we love it? Well, you'll find out in our review. Motorola recently launched its latest flagship killer, the Moto Edge 30 Fusion. It is the company's latest premium smartphone offering under Rs 50,000. On paper, it ticks all the right boxes with its features and specifications. But in a segment that is already populated with the likes of Xiaomi and Realme, can it stand its ground? Find out in our review. Right out of the box, the Moto Edge 30 Fusion is a good-looking device. The curved display and the matte finish back gives the phone a premium look. The phone is fairly light at 175 grams. It is also slim at 7.45 mm, making it one of the thinnest phones. Thanks to the thin design, the phone fits comfortably in one hand and it is easy to use. The matte finish at the back makes the phone free from smudges and fingerprints. The front and the back of the phone have Gorilla Glass 5 protection. The phone comes with IP52 rating. There is no 3.5mm headphone jack, but the 30 Fusion offers a stereo speaker setup. 
Coming to the display of the H30 Fusion, there is a 6.55 inch OLED display with full HD plus resolution and a 144Hz refresh rate. The 10 bit display supports a billion colors and gives a vivid viewing experience. It has a punch hole for the front camera. Thanks to the great refresh rate, the experience of watching HD content was great, leaving us highly impressed. We had no problems using the phone outdoors under bright sunlight, all because of the 1100 nits of peak brightness. The phone has stereo speakers that are loud and clear. The speakers deliver decent bass and we were plenty happy. The Moto Edge 30 Fusion is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 Plus chipset. The processor is fast and can handle everything with ease. The apps open and load quickly and run seamlessly in the background. Multi-tab browsing, social media browsing was a breeze and we have no complaints on this front. However, where we did have a complaint was while playing games. The phone was heating up a lot. We did not have the best experience while playing. Motorola could surely have worked on this slightly more. The phone runs on Android 12 based My UX skin out of the box. The phone has a 50MP primary camera with optical image stabilization, a 13MP ultra wide camera with autofocus for macro shots, and a 2MP macro lens. It features a 32MP front camera. The 50MP main camera produces some great images. There are plenty of details and the color accuracy is pretty spot on. The low light images taken with the primary lens are also noteworthy. It plays well with the shadows. The ultra wide camera also produces some good visuals and is on the same lines as the primary camera. However, the color reproduction of the ultra wide camera is slightly on the cooler side. The macro lens does a good job with plenty of details. The 32MP front camera adds a pinkish tinge to the images, leaving much to be desired. The phone packs a 4400 mAh battery with 68 watts turbo power charging. The battery has enough juice to last you an entire day with normal usage. In about 20 minutes, the phone can go from 0 to 50% and the fast charging makes up for the frugal battery size. Price starting at Rs 42,999, the Moto Edge 30 Fusion is equipped with premium features and impressive specifications. So, should you buy it? With its good design, fast processor and camera performance, this is an all-rounder from Moto and should be on your list of considerations. That then was the Cell Guru Show for this week, but lots coming up including the iPhone 14 Plus and a whole lot more. Do tune in next week.